Tactical processing. This is an advanced way of soothing, self-medicating in a healthy way and processing through unresolved trauma. It's also a beautiful um, protocol for working through frustrations, arguments that you've had with loved ones or blow-ups at work. So there are four sections to it. Map it, name it, question it, and balance it. I'm going to go through all of them, all of them with you now, and then there'll be a case study with you uh, in another video. So map it is very straightforward. What you're going to do, let's just say I had an argument with my wife. And we, uh, it got to the point where I fled into my man cave. I got flooded. Um, I was angry at her. I blamed her for something. And so um, what triggered at me was that she said something about my mother. I'm making this up, but I'm just trying to give you an idea. So she said something about my mother. So I'm now flooded, which means I went to my man cave. So I've identified the triggering slash flooding event. And remember, oh, we haven't shared this with you, but there's a difference between triggered and being flooded. Triggered is that there's something going on. It's a bogey on the radar. It doesn't mean that it's bad. It's a neutral, it's a neutral energy. It just means something's going on. Flooded is fragmented fight or flight. So if I'm triggered, sometimes being triggered is good to know. Being flooded, well, that's when I'm acting dysfunctionally, maladaptively. Okay, so what triggered me? An argument with my wife. Where do I feel it? Now, this is really important. From here down, it's important to get to know with your body brains where the radar is most attentive. Mine is my stomach. Some people have a heart center, some solar plexus, shoulders, neck, jaw, but from here down. This is critical because I learned, as soon as I understood how this worked, as soon as my stomach is upset, I have to ask the question, what's going on? What's bothering me? What just happened that I'm not aware of? So as, I, as I've increased my awareness over, because my stomach's talking to me, I'm able to quickly identify my triggering slash flooding events. That's emotional intelligence. What do I fear? If you're a female, typically this is not a challenge. If you're a man, you'll be stuck in your head and you've been taught not to fear. So you could ask the question, what am I angry about? What am I frustrated about? That's just basically your fear. It's just used it differently. We manifest it differently. It's important to know that. Eventually, you'll find what you're fearing, but right now it'll probably just be frustration or anger. And then the fourth one is, what am I making up that's not true? What am I telling myself? In effect, what's my false narrative? After thousands of these, this is how I developed the eight false narratives. And they were just so predominant, so repeating, that the patterns were just there. It was not difficult to find that pattern. So let's say my false narrative is, um, I don't believe that I can have a healthy relationship emotionally with a person because of the way I was raised. My father left when I was young, parents divorced. I feel it's my fault they got divorced. I've never had a, a, a dominant male leader that treated me with respect. So I don't know what that's like. I dislike, I distrust men as a general rule because they're always telling me what to do. And my mom wasn't present for me when I was growing up. She was physically present, not emotionally present. So if you can get the picture here, I'm now telling myself a false narrative. I've got it. So I write down two or three of my false narratives. Then I'm going to go to name it. Notice I'm going to name my behavior. And if necessary, I'm going to name the behavior of the other person involved. So I'm going to take a quick um, break here for a second and show you that on the left-hand side of um, the tactical processing is the mistake and then the retake because the top part, name, map it and name it, are all about the mistakes that happen. The bottom part is all about redoing it, getting it, being perfect, doing the retake. The results of map it is self-awareness. The results of name it is empathy, compassion, and gratitude. So that's that where we're going, and that's what you'll get if you follow the process. Remember, trust the process, not the results. I want to know what's going on in my space, what's causing me to be in resistance. So is it scarcity? Is it victim trap? Is it the three A's? Am I agreement seeking? Am I shameless? Uh, am I shaming myself? Am I, is it hopelessness? So here's how I usually do it in my office. So I'm going to come down and show them this model. 
So I just flipped it to the drama triangle, and I'm just going to ask the questions. Are you, um, where's your focus, solution, or problem? Where's your energy, acceptance, or resistance? Where's your position, neutral or biased? Typically, it's going to be problem-based, resistance, and biased. All right. I now know I'm either a victim, rescuer, or persecutor role model. So once we determine I'm playing the role of a victim or I'm playing the role of the persecutor, that's what you write down. I'm playing the role of, because there's a worksheet that goes with this. So now you can identify it. If necessary, then you can go uh, to the other person playing a role. And keep in mind, you're not doing this to judge. You're just trying to understand the behavior manifestation and what's driving it. If you can make sense of another person's behavior, empathy goes up, compassion goes up, gratitude goes up. Those would be the natural results of being involved in this style of questioning. So after I've mapped it, I've got, let's say, two or three false narratives I'm telling myself. I recognize that I'm probably playing the victim. I might be playing the persecutor. I'm seeking for the three A's. I'm in total resistance, something along that line. Once I can give it a name, now I'm going to go down to question it. You've already watched then the brain scientist. That's a precursor, a prerequisite to watching this video. The brain scientists are now going to help me. Up until now, it's been the biased and the, um, the un unscrupulous scientist, right? I'm selecting data and I'm bringing that data in, biased data, because I'm only wanting to see what I need to see to support my false narratives. So I'm going to bring that selective data in so I can support I don't have worth, I can't have a good relationship, or I'm not lovable, or I'm helpless and hopeless. Be mindful how subtle this is. So when I get down into question it, I'm going to start engaging the responsible scientist. I'm going to say there's more data here. There's a lot more data here. I'm going to go grab that data. I'm going to turn it over to the curious scientist. The curious scientist is going to ask the question, what if? And he'll or she, he or she will go right to, what am I making up that's not true? Now, if we've got three false stories there, I'm going to say, what if? And then I'll do the antithesis of whatever that was. So what if I do have worth? What if I do have hope? And what if I can have a relationship based on emotional intimacy? Second question, what would that look like? And then I use my imagination to picture what it would look like. So if this were with my wife, say, what if I could get along with my wife? And what if I could be neutral in that space? What would that look like? Hmm. Well, I wouldn't have gone to who is right. I wouldn't have fragmented. I probably would have asked another question or two. I would have tried to understand her point of view. Oh, I would have then realized that it was a misunderstanding and I didn't hear her correctly. And I probably would have then had a wonderful day at work. Then after that's over, after I do the question, and that's my retake, I go to balance it and I go through a, a mindfulness moment. So the way it works is I do a four, four, eight breathing, four in, holding that for a four, releasing to an eight. Now I'm going to visualize what caused me to be triggered or flooded. So I'm going to walk you through an actual event that happened to me years ago with my wife. I'm downstairs. She's upstairs. I yelled a question to my wife. She thought she heard my question. She answered it. I thought I heard her answer. It angered me. And I got real angry at her and I got real mad. And I went into my man cave immediately. She noticed that I went into my man cave. So here we are. What triggered or flooded me? A comment my wife made. Where do I feel it? It was my stomach. What do I fear? I don't know. I'm a man. I'm just angry, right? It's her fault. I'm clearly in the right. She didn't understand me or she didn't give me the right answer. What am I making up that's not true? That she understood me clearly and that she's being a jerk. Name my behavior. Well, first of all, I'm playing the role of a victim. My wife doesn't ever listen to me. Then I played the role of a persecutor because I went into my man cave. In my man cave, I'm proving that she's wrong, right? I'm punishing her. She'll pay for this. I'm not going to talk to her all day long and I'm going to stomp off to work like a mature, grown adult executive. I'm not talking to my wife because she didn't hear me right. Is this making sense? Because it really sounds like an immature child to me. So I get down into question it and I start saying, all right, what if, and that's when life slowed down. So this is an actual story that happened. So I'm going to walk you through it. 
Okay, I'm going to picture me asking my wife the question after I've done my 448. She hears, she gives me the answer, and I'm getting angry. And that's bugging me, and I'm feeling it again. So what am I doing right now? Oh, I'm going into the victim trap, I'm, or the drama triangle. I'm playing the role of a victim. Ah, oh, now I'm persecuting. I see myself marching out to the garage. I'm so mad at her, and I see her following me. And she puts her hands on her hips. This is a true story. She puts her hands on her hips and she says, Rich, I know that you're angry at me and you didn't understand what I said, but I'm not going to lose any happiness today. I'm going to have a great day and I'm not going to let you impact me, but you can be angry if you want, but you misunderstood. And she turned around and left. Now, first of all, she walked in my man cave, but wow. That was really sexy. That was kind of cool. She walked in and called me out on the carpet in a very, very good way. So I got in my car and I'm thinking, man, what a jerk you are. So here's what I did this process on the way to work. I just processed through it. So now I'm at question it. What if I'd have done that? Then I would have got a kiss goodbye. I would have had a smile for my beautiful bride. My day would have been a lot better. So now let's replay the day. So I go through the whole thing. She's make, I yell up to her. She call, yells back to me. I don't understand it. I see myself walking up the stairs and I come up to my wife. I said, Sherry, I don't know if I heard you correctly. What did you say? I said this. Oh, okay. Got it. Thanks. I got to go to work now, babe. I love you. And I get a kiss from my wife. It's over. But look at all the drama I put myself through because I immediately stayed in the me pyramid. I was agreement seeking. I was blaming her. And the fact is, I'm the one who misheard. She gave me an accurate answer that I misinterpreted, didn't hear correctly, stomped off into my little man cave like a, a little child. When you use tactical processing, you can bring everything back. I basically went through that. And one thing I neglected to share with you here is when I do my, I balance it, and you'll have an MP3 on this one if you want. I go through a series. So I'm going to share that with you real quick. I do the breathing. I make an anchor. And when I do my anchor, in my imagination, I create this beautiful ring of light around where I am. Because I want my space to be sacred and to be full of healing. Then I invite my highest power, my God, into my space. Then I invite my best self, my authentic self, into my space. And in that moment, I process everything because I've got these two beautiful resources. I go through everything that I did wrong. I give it a name. I release. I give a pink slip to my biased and my unscrupulous scientist. I employ my responsible, curious, and quintessential scientist. And I go through the process. I use mindfulness to deepen it. I have multiple experiences. And now my whole body is balanced again. So when I came home from work that day, I walked straight to my wife. I apologized, told her what I did wrong, and gave her a kiss. And I don't know that I've done that too many more times since then because it was so memorable, and I've started that process of healing. That was perfect. Thanks for listening.